Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Carrie and today I am doing my June wrap up. I read a lot of books in June and when I say a lot I mean a lot. To be fair most of them were either audiobooks or children's books because there were a couple of times in June that my cousins wanted me to read them books. But let's just go through the list and whatever ones I have physically I will show you. So the first one is Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate which I listened to on audiobook. I gave this one, I want to say, three stars. It was cute. It was short, and it was just kind of, you know, cute. That's that's really all I had. And next I read Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman, which I gave four stars. It was really fun to read about the Norse gods who do all sorts of crazy-ass shit all the time. Uh, so it was a lot of the stories. It was more like a compilation of Norse mythology than it was a coherent story, but I didn't mind that. Then I read the first HP book in Spanish. Then I listened to that. Then I read Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. Um, this is the movie tie-in cover, obviously. It's... I think I got this used, but I read this via audiobook as well. This one I gave a 4 out of 5. It's really cute. It's definitely very different from the movie, but I liked this better than her book Ogre Enchanted, which just came out a year ago, two years ago. Um, I think it's really cute, I think it's age appropriate, and I thoroughly enjoyed the story. Then I read The Duchess and Guy, a rescue to royalty puppy love story by Nancy Furstinger, which is a story about Meghan Markle and her actual dog. Super cute story, loved how it actually took the story and didn't put her down or anything like that because there has been a lot of have been a lot of articles in the news that have been not so nice to her and Harry and I, I'm not big on that. But this story was just super cute. It talked about the actual story and the inspiration for it in the back of the book. Loved it. And then I read Drums of Autumn by Diana Gabaldon. This is the third book? Fourth book? Fourth book, I think. Um, in the Outlander series, and this one honestly could have been 200 pages. This thing was so freaking long. I Nobody needed that, so I think I gave it three stars because I was bored for 800 out of the 900 pages. Next I read Rapunzel's Revenge by Shannon and Deal Dean Hale, illustrated by Nathan Hale. This is a retelling of the Rapunzel story set in the Wild West. This was fantastic. Five out of five. The storyline was great. I really liked the relationship between the characters, and the artwork is amazing. Next I read Miss Tutu's Star by Leslie Newman. Children's book, read it to my cousins. It was very cute, not super memorable, uh, but I do remember thinking it wasn't great, but again cute, so I think I gave it three stars. Then I read The Bernstein Bears and the In Crowd and The Bernstein Bears Moving Day. Um, I think I gave them both three, three and a half stars. They're typical Bernstein Bear books. They're cute. Um, I remember really liking them as a kid, and I still thoroughly enjoy them. And I think they have good messages and stuff like that. So they were good. I think they were a little bit shallow though. And I get that that's part of being a kid's book, but at the same time I do think they could have gone a little bit further in. I do think I gave the in-crowd four stars because it went a little bit further in depth. I read Hidden Figures by Margaret Lee Shetterly, children's version, to my cousin, and that was fantastic. I gave that, I think, a five star because the illustrations were amazing. I love that it's very much telling women, and specifically women of color, you can do this, you're just as good, uh, which obviously they are, and it shouldn't have taken this long to get there, but that's a whole other thing. Um, so this book, awesome, five out of five. Then I read the Water Protect We Are the Water Protectors by Carol Lundstrom, illustrated by Michaela Goad. Also read this one to my cousin. Uh, this is specifically about the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, which has recently been ordered to be cleaned out so that an entire environmental study can be done. We'll see where that goes. I'm not super hopeful that it will be shut down because capitalism. But this was a beautiful book that was definitely metaphorical in its words, but very clear in its pictures that this was an oil pipeline, there are problems, this is not okay. So I really liked the message, I loved the illustrations, 5 out of 5. Then I read The Bernstein Bear's New Baby, uh, this one I gave 3 out of 5. It was cute, it's really good for siblings, very superficial though. Then I read Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson, 
I did not expect to like this one as much as I did though. Um, I think I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. Yep, 4 out of 5. Um, because, and I'm reading Goodreads because I've read a lot of books so I don't really remember. I loved the banter, I liked the friendship. Um, oh, this one! This one was really good. Yeah, the banter was fantastic. The relationships were fascinating. And the twist at the end really threw me. I just, I adored the dynamics between the characters. I thought it was really well done. Next I read Queendom of the Seven Lakes by A.B. Endicott. I read this as part of Abby from Autumn and Pelinor and Caitlin from Mad Cheshire Rabbits. Um, independently published book club. It's called the Small Press Book Club, I believe. I will leave that link down below. And this was their book for the month of June. Abby absolutely raves about this series and this author, and I can see why. I did give this book a 4 out of 5 because it felt really short. Um, it felt like there could have been a lot more... not even world building, because there was a lot of world building in this short book, but more sort of to get to know the characters a little bit more, to really see their relationship develop. However, that said, I did really enjoy watching the, develop, the relationship develop between Gideon and Ellen I. Next is Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. I read this on audiobook. I read this as a kid and remember absolutely loving it. It was really fascinating. And having reread it, I stand by it. Um, I think I gave it 5 out of 5. It's about a girl who's on an island in the Pacific. Her people all die. And so she's left alone on this island with nobody else, and she figures out how to do things that traditionally the men would do, as opposed to the women, and how to survive on this island for several months until I think it's a missionary ship comes. But it's... it was really good. It was really fun. Next up, I read Fire, Graceling, and Bitter Blue, all on audiobook. And amazing. I have to say I did like Graceling better because it had a full cast. Fire and Bitter Blue were done by the same narrator, who was good, um, but British. Not that that's a bad thing, but because the full cast in Graceling was not, it was a little bit disorienting to go into Fire and Bitter Blue and hear a British accent for some of the characters that overlap in all three. But I adore these books. Fire is my least favorite of the three, but I still gave it a 4 out of 5. These two get 5 out of 5s every time I read them. They're amazing. Love them. Then I read The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagardar. Um, which is a contemporary shock, I know, about these two young women in Ireland who decide to go into a henna competition. It's a business competition in their school and they both decide to do henna for it. It was really fascinating. There's a female-female romance in this. I loved the way the characters developed. I loved watching... Um, I mean, I don't love watching her, the main character struggle with her Bengali I think is the right word. Uh, yeah, Bengali culture in Ireland. But it was really well done. There are triggers, or trigger warnings, at the beginning of this book, so before you read this, do check it out, because there are some not-so-nice scenes. Specifically, you know what, I'll just do it for you, because that's a lot better. So, content warning. This book contains instances of racism, homophobia, bullying, and a character being, being outed. So if any of that is going to trigger you, don't read this book, but if you are in the right headspace or can handle this, I definitely highly recommend it. I give it a 5 out of 5. I told you I read a lot of books. I then read The Wonky Donkey, which is another children's book by Craig Smith. This one I think I give it 2 out of 5 stars. It's cute, but if I'm going to read something with that many words that sound the same, because it goes the... I don't know, it starts with Wonky Donkey and then he goes and starts stumbling and he starts smelling so you get all of these words. If I'm gonna read something like that I'd rather read The Old Lady Who Swallowed the Fly because I think that one's funnier. Then I listened to Truly Devious and The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. Um, that is about... it's a dual perspective, one set in the 1930s where the founder of this school loses his wife and daughter in kidnapping and the second perspective is modern day, and one of the students who goes there is trying to figure out the mystery. It's not the best written thing I've ever read. Um, I think I gave, it, gave them both 3 out of 5 stars. It is good enough for me to keep going because it is the mystery part of it is really interesting. And I like how she solves a mystery, but the overarching mystery continues through all three books. Like I said, not the best written 
you don't have to pay a lot of attention to these books either, which considering I was doing it on audiobook was nice, but also was, eh, you know, it didn't really make me just dive right into it and lose myself. Then I read Good Night Everyone, Oh No George, Shh, We Have a Plan, and Don't Worry Little Crab by Chris Houghton. Uh, read them to my cousins. One of them really wanted to read all four books that night, so we read all four books. They are all very cute. I gave two of them four out of five, two of them three out of five. If you want to know which ones, go check out my Goodreads because, uh, let's be honest, I'm too lazy to look at all four of them right now. But uh, yeah, so read those. Super cute. Some of them are more superficial than others. Uh, largely that is why I did it. One of them didn't seem to have any sort of theme at all, any sort of moral, and I realize that children's books don't always have to have morals, but I am a firm believer in stuff like Aesop's Fables, where there is some sort of lesson to be learned there, because I think that's a really good way to get kids to know, don't steal, don't lie, don't kill somebody, without just shoving something like the Ten Commandments at them. Then I read Six Magic Treehouse books, which included The Dolphins at Daybreak, Lions at Lunchtime, and Viking Ships at Sunrise. Along with Vacation Under the Volcano, Ghost Town at Sundown, Polar Bears at Past Bedtime, and Day, oh, Day of the Dragon Kings and Hour of the Olympics. This is a really fun series for uh, primary schoolers, I guess, elementary kids, uh, probably six to eight-ish. Depends on, you know, your reading. Um, I do have an entire children's book recommendation video, so I'll link that down below if you want to check that out. But these were all really cute. I gave them between a 3 and a 4 out of 5. Some of them felt very limited, and I realized that they're supposed to be limited. They're 45 minutes each on audiobook, which is how I listen to them, and they're, I think, less than 100 pages. Yeah, they're about 70 pages each. So I get that they're supposed to be superficial, I get that that's what's for the age range, but even for six to eight year olds, I do think some of them put less in than others. And I would like to see some consistency across the board. However, I do recognize that that's not going to happen necessarily with the number of books that Mary Pope Osborne puts out, or put out. I'm not sure if she's dead. That would be awkward. Anyway, either way, I do still really enjoy these books. I liked them as a kid, I like them now. The last series, last book, whatever, that I read in June. Um, I don't know how many that is. It's a lot. Let me know. I think it's got to be close to 20. You know what I could do? I could count. That would be a thing. Let's... One, two, three, four, five, six... What? That doesn't make any sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two... 3, 24, 25, 26, fuck, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Oh, fuck, fuck. Alright guys, apparently I read 35 books this month. Um, yes, I realize that many of them are children's books, but even without the children's books, the actual, you know, picture book types of things, I still read over 20 chapter books, which is just insane to me. My reading has... I don't even know. There's something, there's a lot wrong with me, but we're not going to go into that now. That could be a whole series of its own, but that's not anything you need to know. So anyway, I'm rambling again. I realized I don't care a lot. Um, I mean, I do. I like doing these videos. I like doing videos in general, which is why I'm still here, but uh, you will notice I am relaxing a lot more because you came to see me in whatever capacity that is. And this year, the world's blown up, so I don't give a fuck. Great. Anyway, those are the 35 books I read in June. Hope you enjoyed. If you've read any, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.